So hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is an important outcome we are looking for in asphyxia because the most important, even though multiple or multi-organ dysfunction can be there, the most important long-term factor is the brain. That's why we are focusing so much on the brain in terms of asphyxial injury. So HAE is a clinical and neuropathological finding of encephalopathy that occurs in a full-term infant who has experienced significant episode of intrapartum asphyxia. So these are important. Intrapartum asphyxia is important. It should be documented as a significant episode and there should be features of abnormality in the brain, both clinically and possibly on imaging. So we have the insult here and the first thing that happens is a primary energy failure, which happens immediately. There is a sodium overload, exatotoxicity, and then there is immediate necro necrosis and cell death. And when the reperfusion happens, the cerebral metabolism transiently recovers. However, there is calcium overload, reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide may add to the damage. And this is the secondary phase, which lasts from hours to days, usually between 60 to, uh, 6 to 72 hours when there is mitochondrial dysfunction and there is apoptosis uh, delayed cell death. So this is the reason for the hypoxic ischemic injury. The primary energy failure part, it's already done. We can't do anything about it. Most of the therapeutic interventions are uh, between the insult to the first six hours. If you delay it too much, then the secondary injury has started and you can't really correct anything. So it's the reperfusion phase that we are mainly targeting for the therapeutic window, like cooling and other treatments we will discuss. The neurotoxicity happens from the release of excitatory amino acids in excess, like glutamate and aspartate. There is overstimulation of the NMDA receptors and there is calcium influx into the cells as well. Uh, all these changes lead to accelerated apoptosis. So we have something called programmed cell death or apoptosis, which happens in all of us. Aging is the most important reason that apoptosis happens and some of the organs apoptosis is programmed, like for intestine, uh, for example, the intestines are formed as cylinders and then the cells are lost in a systematic way. So it becomes a canalized uh, version. So you have programmed cell death in all the tissues according to the purpose of them. Accelerated apoptosis leads to loss of these cells before they are programmed to die. So there is loss of regulation of apoptosis and the free oxygen radical damage leads to significant injury as well. We may have hypoglycemia, seizures, hypotension, which are often associated with asphyxia and these lead to additional brain injury. The multi-organ involvement thankfully doesn't lead to multi, I mean, a long-term impact other than very severe renal failure, which is not common, which can lead to death. So the organs affected kidneys in 50%, brain 28%, heart and lung in 25% or so. The other organ involvement like the liver, bowel, bone marrow is quite rare, but you may get a transient hepatitis, a liver enzyme increase or a direct hyperbilirubinemia, which is transient. The neuropathological changes typically seen in term babies include selective neuronal necrosis, which leads to spastic cerebral palsy, uh, status marmoratus, which is typically the acute total asphyxia, chorea, otitoi, and uh, dystonic CP, the parasagittal or the watershed brain injury, where you get spastic quadriparesis, and the focal and multifocal ischemic brain injury. This can happen in the acute on chronic or the total as well. This leads to cognitive defects, seizures, and hemiparesis. And in the premature babies, it's periventricular leukomalacia, which is typical. However, in a persistent asphyxial insult in the premature baby, the basal ganglia damage may dominate as well. So the classification of HAE can be either Levine's classification as mild, moderate, and severe, mainly looking at consciousness, stone, seizure, and the presence of sucking versus uh, active respiratory response. So the mild, obviously, babies are irritable, hypotonic. There is no seizure in these cases, and the suck is poor. Seizures become moderate and uh, prolonged seizures or coma become severe. All of you are familiar with the Sarnath and Sarnath classification and uh, due to shortage of time, we'll not go into the detail, but you have stage one, two, and three, typically stage one, hyper alert with the uh, sympathetic overactivity. Stage two is hyper-responsive, uh, hypotonic with parasympathetic overactivity, starting bradycardia and so on. And you have stage three, comatose. The seizures happen in stage two and may be persistent in stage three. But if the baby becomes comatose and the tone becomes very low, you may have electrical seizures in these babies and not over.